Archaeology is a scientific methodology that we use for knowing the past. And we do that by going from evidence in the material record and analyzing that and studying it in order to construct our understanding of the past. So things like artifacts or features in the archaeological record, something like a hearth or a mound, for instance, tells us something about people in the past. Um, and for me, archaeology is really um, an additive kind of constructive science where we're gathering information, we're gathering evidence, um, and then we're using that to construct our understanding of the past. And like other sciences, what we're doing is coming up with ideas or hypotheses about the past, gathering evidence to test those hypotheses, and then refining it over time. And this is why we continue to study places like Spiro Mounds, for instance, because as we're gathering more and more evidence, we're refining and changing our understanding of it. Well, the doing of archaeology can happen in different ways. There can be excavation, for instance. There can be survey where we're walking along the surface of the ground and looking at the landscape. Um, so there's different ways that we can gather data. The one that most people have heard of is excavation. So we carefully excavate in a scientific manner, documenting what we find. Um, and then what we do is we take that information back into our labs and then we study it in a systematic way to understand the past. So there are different indicators that can tell us general things about people in the past. So for instance, the type of stone tools that they use can tell us a little bit about uh, their life ways. You know, whether they are hunting or fishing people or agricultural people, we should be able to see that in the types of tools that they're using. So um, as we go through systematically and, and study, their tools, for instance, will refine that even further. So we may be able to discern that they're hunting people. So we may be interested in their, whether they're hunting large game or small game, and those will show us different kinds of things about their adapt adaptation to their environment. Um, in addition to that, with the same example of the stone tools, we might look at those um, and examine the source of those tools to understand the way that they moved along the landscape a little bit better. Um, were they moving around a lot? Were they uh, mobile? Or were they more sedentary? Did they stay in one place? Um, we may find different types of uh, stone tools in their toolkit that came from far off places and we may try to guess whether they're moving around to these places or whether these stone tools are being traded through space. Um, so sourcing studies can tell us a little bit about the mobility of a group or perhaps the types of groups that they're connected with and who they're trading with. So this is the way that we start to extract information from the archaeological record and then use that to construct ideas about the past that then we can test against other lines of evidence. Archaeology is particularly helpful in looking at um, contact across great expanses. Um, one of the ways of doing that is just looking at different material types and sourcing them or finding out the origin of those materials used to make a particular object. So things like stone tools, for instance, um, where we can look at the object and through um, optical kind of description, investigation of the material type, we can place it at a source in a particular area. Um, and sometimes there are different types of analyses that we can use, neutron activation, x-ray fluorescence, that can help us to quote unquote source a stone object um, and know where its origin is from. Um, ideally, the best kinds of studies um, that are investigating trade networks are going to look at a variety of different material types. So we'll look at stone tools, but then sometimes there's stone material that may be used for pipes, for instance, and um, those raw materials will tell us uh, exactly where they're from if we're lucky enough. Um, in the case of Spiro Mound, for instance, there's other uh, materials that are important like shell. Um, and we can tell if it's shell from the Pacific Ocean, for instance, or the Gulf of Mexico, or farther afield in many cases. That tells us about these long distance trade networks and connections between different people. Um, in addition to that, sometimes we'll have metal material. So for instance, there's copper from the Great Lakes region known from Spiro. 
So we know that there's a connection there. Um, but archaeologists try to dig a little bit more deeply than that. So, you know, we'll source those materials, but then we also want to try to better understand the nature of that relationship. So is it one where people from these far off sources are traveling to this place and trading, or is it uh, down the line trade, we might say, where a material has, has exchanged hands many times before it arrived at this place that we're interested in studying? Um, also, we want to know what does that mean? So if people, for instance, at Spira are connected to folks in Arkansas and as far away as the Great Lakes regions and the coasts where this shell is coming from, well, what does that mean exactly? Does that mean that people are going out to these places or people are coming in? Does it mean that um, these materials have some symbolic value or is there an economic value? Um, what is it about the nature of this relationship that can ultimately tell us more about this place? So we want to go beyond just trade um, and give them the benefit of the doubt and realize that it's not only materials that are trading, but also ideas as well. Um, so these connections start to tell us more about the globalized world in ancient times. We often, we oftentimes don't give people enough credit in the past for the connections that they maintained um, and as intercontinentally kind of connected as they were.